Okay, so before you start, you're gonna need just a few little tools, let's call them. Uh, the first thing is you're gonna need like a measuring device or a pointing device. And I tend to find that a cooking skewer, like for the barbecue, is perfection because it is exactly the same width. It's not too wide. Like sometimes I find a pencil is too wide so I can't get a very accurate uh, measurement. But I really love a skewer. It doesn't matter which end you use because it's very thin and it perfectly gives you that line that you're looking for. Next is you want to get an eyeliner pencil. <laughs> I use our Red Apple Lipstick Pencil in Coco because it matches my eyebrows closely. Um, and basically we're gonna be using this to mark and, you know, mark our measurements basically so um, that we have kind of a guideline to tweeze around. Third thing you're gonna need is your tweezers. And I absolutely love these slant tip tweezers from Revlon. I own like four pairs of them. <laughs> um, makeup bag and then like in my bathroom and anyways, I have them everywhere. I really love the slant tip because it allows you to grab quite a few hairs like all at once, um, which when you're doing a big job like I'm gonna do today, is super helpful for speeding the process along. But at the same time, on that really sharp edge there, you can really get, you know, close and definite and pick just one hair if that's what you need. So uh, those are the three instruments and we're gonna get started right away. Okay, first things first is you're gonna take your skewer or whatever measuring device that you have and you're gonna place it against your nose and then slide it down so that it hits the inside of your eyebrow. We're gonna do this on both sides and then I'm gonna place a dot where I measured um, and then we're gonna tweeze everything in between that, okay? So as you can see, I've got quite a few hairs to pluck on this side and I kind of need to let this side grow in if it will uh, closer to that line. Some people find that this is really painful and they turn really red. I don't really have, I mean, I'll turn a little red, but it'll go away pretty quickly because I'm a, I'm a hairy girl and so I pluck quite often. Um, but if you do have any problem, I really recommend using like I mean, obviously you could use ice, but like an ice pack would be really handy to just have sitting here um, versus ice where it melts and gets all watery. So just like an ice pack or some frozen peas that you could just put against as you're working your way down because the point is to kind of numb it, then pluck, and then maybe put it on again to kind of lessen the inflammation. Um, but I really like to pluck quickly and I like to pull away like with the grain instead of down or against, okay? Okay, all done there in the center. I'm gonna take just a cloth or, you know, you could take a makeup wipe or some coconut oil, whatever, and just rub off the little lines and then we'll get started on the next measurement. Okay, so now what you wanna do is just use your fingers or if you have an eyebrow, like brush or spoolie, um, just kind of dust up so that everything is going the right way and then kind of smooth at the top. You wanna to create that natural arch because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eye pencil and we're basically going to draw from the bottom, we're gonna draw the arch that we see happening naturally on the eyebrow itself. Um, this one may be a little bit different than this one. If they are drastically different and you want them to be more the same, pick which one that you really like and go from there. But eyebrows are sister and not twins so don't be so precise because you can end up over plucking and look like we all looked in the early 2000s with those skinny little eyebrows <laughs> so that is definitely not what you want to do um, but you'll get kind of an idea of what I'm talking about once I mark mine and then what we'll do is we'll pluck basically all the eyebrows that are below that line <music> Okay. 
Okay, so it might be a little hard to see on me. However, when you do this for yourself, you'll definitely notice where that line is. And then as you're plucking, just use your own judgment. If that line is like a little jaggedy or whatever, just don't, just make sure, start plucking less. Let's just say it that way. Start with less and just pluck like the crazy strays that are like way down here. Pluck those first and then move your way up to that line instead of working all the way over. And then what will happen is you will slowly kind of start to develop that arch and that is the best way to go about it. Okay, so I always tend to start out here on the edges because that is where like I get crazy eyebrows out there. So I always try to start there because those are the most obvious to me, which really starts to define that arch. Then I will go to where the point is right above my eye. That leads me to another point. Let's just take our little measuring device again. And if you look at your eye straight on a mirror, okay, and you look at where your, yep, there it is. The outside, the outside of your iris um, should line up basically with your arch. So that's kind of a good way to tell if you're not exactly sure where the, the crux of your arch should be. Um, just line up the outside of your pupil, not pupil, your iris, the outside of your iris with the stick and that is where the really sharp point or highest point should be on each eyebrow. So that's a really great thing to mark too. Um, you could just take your pencil and you could just draw a dot uh, right where that is supposed to be so that you know that that's where the top of your arch is going to be. Okay, I've only done this side so far, but the last little measurement that I wanna go over with you is how to figure out where exactly the end of your brow should end. Um, this is kind of tricky, especially if you've started getting sparse brows along the edge and maybe it doesn't even go to the end. So when we fill in our brows, we'll go over this again because you can really, um, you can help that situation, so don't worry about it. But for those of you with bushy eyebrows like myself, um, let's take the not the pointy end but the blunt end of whatever instrument you're using and you're going to place it basically on the bottom of your eye where your bottom lash line is and you're going to allow it to go at a diagonal line outward and that right there is the exact line that like your eyeliner if you were gonna do a winged eyeliner should take but also you can measure exactly where the end of your eyebrow should be Mine happens to end exactly where I want it to end perfectly, which is, it's just kind of the natural place for it to end. But if your eyebrows go beyond that, just place a little mark where it is and pluck beyond that. Like if they go down in here, you definitely want to get rid of those. And if your eyebrows, like I said, are more sparse, then we'll handle that when we fill them in. But that is the last measurement is to know exactly where that eyebrow should should complete. <laughs> Okay, so now both sides are done, and what I want to talk about next is the little stragglers. So typically it's recommended that you don't like pluck from the top because you can end up, it can just look funny. Um, however, I always tend to have a few stragglers up here above the top that just like they grow in funky directions. It's totally weird. Um, so I always want to give those a little, a little pluck, and then if anything is really, really out of place, like if I have an arch line that comes way up on one of them, then I'll usually give that a little pluck so that they're they're slightly as even as they can be on the top. And my eyebrows are never the same. They are never identical and I'm okay with that and you should be too.
Okay, so that's everything as far as plucking and shaping your eyebrows goes. Next, um, as you can tell, I've got sparseness in certain places and it just doesn't feel complete to me. I look at my eyebrows and I'm like, you know what, you guys can look just a teensy bit better. And the way we're gonna make that happen is we're gonna use a color called Brownie Points. Um, it is my favorite eyeshadow that matches my hair perfectly and pretty much anybody in the brown hair range, Brownie Points is gonna look really great. Those of you with really, really dark brown hair, Espresso is going to be your eyeshadow. You girls with black, gorgeous, jet black hair, y'all are going to want to use Black Magic. And then Blonde Ladies, Yes You Canyon is going to look fantastic on you. It's going to be slightly darker than your eyebrow color, which is what blonde chicks need for their eyebrows. And then anyone, oh, and that would also go for any of you platinum beauties out there, you silver foxes, also use Yes You Canyon on your brows. Um, you never want to use a gray eyeshadow or a gray pencil on eyebrows. You want to use something that's closer to your natural hair color that's just going to give a little bit of uh, pigmentation so that's perfect and any of you redhead gals out there you want to use a color called sugar and spice it is like a perfect match for any redhead and I don't care what what range of or shade that, that you have of red hair sugar and spice is gonna look awesome so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, the angled eyeliner brush from Red Apple Lipstick and I am just going to dip that in a little bit of my brownie points eyeshadow and I like to start in the uh, sparsest area which is usually right about the the top of my arch and I just lightly dab it in so that it can start filling in but it doesn't you're not like drawing lines which is why I prefer shadow over pencil like any day because a pencil is so easy to just like get distracted and kind of jab and oh gosh just just I, I hate pencils so if you like pencils that's great go for it rock it out but this is talking about shadow because it's my favorite so we're going to start right where it's most sparse and just light little strokes as we fill it in and then I like to move to the outside first, and then I move into the inside. So we're just gonna dab until it looks pretty uniform, but still looks like an actual eyebrow. I still wanna look like I have normal eyebrows and not like I've actually you know, drawn them in. So we're gonna get started on that. I'm gonna flip to the other eye, and then you can see the end product. Okay, so there you go, all plucked, filled in, and ready to rock. I know that some of you might wonder, like, do I have to do this every single day? First of all, the plucking, if you just keep up with it and you'll start to understand how your eyebrows look, you'll start to understand where the growth happens and just pluck those like whenever, you know? It just takes two seconds if you just catch them. This took a lot longer because I was trying to grow them out um, for this video. So the filling in of the eyebrows though, I do this on a regular basis like anytime I am going to wear more than just you know some mascara and some rally balm and get out the door I am filling in my eyebrows even if it's one of the only things that I'm doing maybe I'm wearing a simple simple makeup look the eyebrows just really frame the face and they make you look awake they make you look more youthful because obviously young people have super filled in eyebrows especially 
like think young preteens before they've really started messing with their face, they have gorgeous eyebrows and gorgeous eyelashes. And so we want to replicate the, the feeling of fullness and uh, youthfulness. And so that's what filling in your eyebrows does. It frames the face, it frames the eyes, and it really, really completes that look. So if you haven't been filling in your eyebrows or shaping your eyebrows, now is the time. Set aside like 30 minutes and just pamper yourself. Pluck your eyebrows, fill them in, and then look at how different you look. It's going to be kind of an amazing transformation if you're not already doing this. And I would love to see pictures and I would love to hear all about your experience. And if you have any questions, of course you can ask us. We are always happy to help. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.